Hello and welcome to Big Old Bits Card Fight Vanguard Weekly Update. My name is James and today I will be going through the cards shown throughout the past seven days. First up is the original Murakumo boss, Covert Demonic Dragon Mandala Lord. He's a double R grade 3 and has lost his ability to lower power of units and has now gained Auto Vanguard Circle when placed, cost Count Blast 1 and Soul Blast 1. Choose two of your units, search your deck for of a card with the same name as each of those units, call them to separate rearguard circle and shuffle your deck. That's a very cheap cost for two rear guards that don't disappear at the end of the turn. And he also has Act Vanguard Circle once per turn, cost per card from your hand into your soul. And all of your units with the same name as this unit get plus 3000 power until the end of the turn. This skill will make more sense later on, but for this time being, this is very good for a doubler. And nice to know that the deck won't solely rely on the Zanbaku and Arrested gimmick. Mandala Lord is there to give out some pressure and Murakumo are only getting a one triple R in this set but I do feel with the other triple R grade threes we've seen already this is definitely triple R worthy but easier to get thanks to its lower rarity. To directly support this card we have Stealth Dragon Turbulent Edge. He's a common grade one but has the useful skill of Act Rearguard Circle Cost Counter Blast 1 and Soul Blast 1. Until the end of the turn, change the name of all your Stealth Dragon Turbulent Edge or Rearguard Circle to Covert Demonic Dragon Mandala Lord. And all your Covert Demonic Dragon Mandala Lord on Vanguard Circle and Rearguard Circle get plus 3000 power. With on ride with Mandala Lord, you can clone himself and Turbulent Edge to really start building up the power. It also gives all of them plus 6000 power with their two skills combined. So Turbulent Edge makes for a powerful booster or a useful attacker that hits some good numbers. Another useful grade 1 is Stealth Dragon Amatsu Snipe. It has the ability of continuous vanguard circle rearguard circle if a rearguard was placed from your deck during your turn. This unit gets plus 5000 power, a seemingly fairly likely ability to go off. Boosting a powered up Mandala Lord gets to a 27000 power column on its own but also 30000 with Turbulent Edge which is really strong against Protect and Excel clans on its own and with the Turbulent Edge power as well it does really well against Force. This will likely be a staple in any build of the deck, whether you want to focus on Zanbaku or Mandela Lord. Lastly for Murakumo, we have the common grade 3 stealth fiend Yakume Shadow. His ability is auto. When you drive check reveals this card, you may call this card to rearguard circle. It's nice to have an ambush-like mechanic in a clan that's supposed to be specializing in ambushes. This is a pretty luck-based skill for the time being, and he has no gift marker. But it is quite an interesting skill, which can make all the difference in the fight, especially calling him out on the Axel circle in the late game. We have one Shadow Paladin card this week, which is Invest Falcon. Its skill is auto rear guard circle when it boosts if you have another grade one or less rear guard this unit may get plus 5000 power until the end of the battle if you got plus 5000 power at the end of that battle retire this unit if phantom blast the dragon's ability happens at the end of the battle and requires retiring then this card will be amazing for fueling that being able to be a 13k booster and then missing the timing on its own retire skill by retiring it with phantom blaster Either way, this is going to be really good in premium ritual decks as it's an efficient way to get grade 1s into the drop zone. For dark regulars, we have Win the Ripper. He's a triple R grade 2 with auto, vanguard circle, rearguard circle, when placed, soul charge 1, and if your soul has 10 or more cards in it, cost counter plus 1, choose one of your opponent's rearguards and retire it. He's not the best for setting up, but once you get to that 10 soul, he's a pretty cheap retire skill. And retire in the protect clan is going to be incredibly useful. It's nice that he can help set up towards the beginning of the game, but you would want to save him in hand for later the game. But that flexibility is what gives him the triple R status. Pale Moon received their VR this week with Golden Beast Tamer. Her first skill is continuous vanguard circle during your turn if you have 5 or more units, or your front row gain 3000 power. This is much cheaper than Maelstrom's, but Maelstrom can do it with a smaller field such as just Tidal Assault and Diamantes to still get 5 attacks in, though this first skill works really well combined with her second skill of Auto Vanguard Circle. When it attacks, cost counter blast 1 and put a card from your hand into your soul and call up to 2 units from your soul to rearguard circle. These new units can replace other rested units to gain another big attack and can get you to the right amount of units on the board for her first skill. Comicality Chimera works well with this card, allowing you to put one of the rested rearguards into your soul to also counter charge one and not lose as much from calling others out, which lowers the cost of Golden Beast Tamer's ability somewhat. Next is a pretty fun grade 2, Magical Box Dreamer. His first ability is Auto Vanguard Circle. When an attack by your opponent's unit hits this unit, cost counter blast 2 and discard a card from your hand and call up to 5 cards from your soul to rearguard circle. 
It's a big, but being able to get the chance to call up to five units is well worth it. There are cards to support this by getting early soul, and so long as you don't call rear guards before this, your opponent will want to attack him to get the most out of their vanguard, otherwise they're missing out on drive checks. His second skill is continuous rearguard circle during your turn. If your soul has magical Brock Streamer in it, this unit gets plus 3000 power. This is pretty simple, but gives you a better reason to run this card, as he's still not useless on rearguard circle. Midnight Bunny is a good way to build the soul up, with her feat of auto rearguard circle when it boosts, soul charge one. If you want to boost with her, you have to soul charge one, there's no option to not, so you won't want to be boosting with her in the late game. But she also has auto rearguard circle when an attack that this unit boosted hits. Cost counterblast one, put this unit into your soul and call up to one card other than grade one from your soul to rearguard circle. You will hopefully be able to pull this off mid game when you'll stop needing to soul charge and can make a pretty formidable extra attack when calling the new unit to an Axel circle. Finally for the week is Starting Presenter. He's a grade 1 with Auto Vanguard Circle Rearguard Circle when placed from hand, Soul Charge 1. Right off he can start to get the gears turning for the deck, and he also has Auto when rode upon cost per card from your hand into your soul, and Soul Charge 1. You may call the Soul Charge unit to Rearguard Circle. You nearly always want to call it to Rearguard Circle from the soul, as you're not losing as much for losing a card in hand. Even if it's a trigger, it still gives you a booster. Also, Big Orbit will be hosting a Vanguard tournament at TCGCon at Stratford-upon-Avon in the UK this weekend on Saturday, August 18th. As well as standard and premium tournaments for Vanguard, we will also be hosting tournaments for Final Fantasy TCG and Dragon Ball Super TCG on the 18th and 19th. The link to buy tickets and for more information is in the description below. Feel free to let me know your feelings on the new cards. I'm mostly interested to see what happens with Murakumo, as the current reveals seem to be working against each other a little bit. But at least Musashi can support whichever build you decide to focus on. We are nearing the end of the high rarity reveals, so we should be seeing either Dark Regulars or Shadow Paladins VR next week, as well as hopefully finding out what Marukumo's triple R is. I hope to see you next week when I'll be going through the card showing throughout the next seven days. Bye!